From September 2021 to August of 2022, I worked full-time as head of community for an amazing company called Clockwise. It was a really exciting opportunity because their mission, which is to help people create more time in their schedules for what matters, falls so perfectly in line with my own core values. While my time at Clockwise was wonderful, I have honestly had a lot on my plate. During this time, I also continued to serve clients as a time management coach, I gave keynotes and workshops, and I continued publishing episodes of my podcast, It's About Time. And of course, I'm wife to my husband and mom to two little girls who are both under four years old. If you know anything about kiddos at this phase, saying they're a handful is an understatement. It's safe to say that the past year unlocked an entirely new frontier in time management for me. I got into a good groove, but it did not happen overnight. And that's what I wanna share with you today. How I structured my days with so much going on, the biggest changes I made over the year, plus what and who I turn to for support. If you're in a similar situation right now, I feel you. Maybe you're balancing a full-time job and a side gig or a few part-time jobs or a ton of different freelance clients. This video is for you. Let's get started. Also, go ahead and subscribe to this channel because I know we're gonna be able to help you manage all of the things on your plate. You've got this. The first thing I did was look at what I was doing and how I was spending my time. When you look at how you're spending your time in either a professional role or your business, or even in your personal life, you'll find that there's actually a lot that can be cut. Things that you're doing that just aren't necessary. Things you can delegate to other people. Things that you used to enjoy or have time for, but now you've outgrown them. So I looked at my coaching business and I clarified what bare minimum looked like. And maybe you just gasped and thought, oh, the bare minimum, I could never. How can you admit that? But remember, the bare minimum looks different for all of us. And it's not that I wanted to figure out the least amount of work possible to skate by. There's something called the 80-20 rule, also called the Pareto Principle. It states that 80% of outputs are a result of 20% of inputs. That basically means that 20% of the things that you do in your business are creating 80% of the results. So 20% of your marketing efforts are probably bringing in 80% of your clients. Or 20% of your clients are probably responsible for 80% of your revenue. This is what I mean about figuring out the bare minimum. I zeroed in on the 20% activities that were giving me the 80% results. That 20% would be my new bare minimum. The highest impact activities. That's it, no fluff and no extras. If you're trying to balance a lot of responsibilities, I encourage you to do the same for your roles. This will help you understand what actually gives you the results in your volunteer roles, your professional roles, or even your personal roles. So that when you're short on time, you can focus on the good stuff first. After I analyzed how I was spending my time and where I made the best use of my time, I determined where I needed help. Do you have trouble asking others for help? You're not alone. So many people struggle with letting go and trusting other people. It gets easier with practice. I encourage you to work on embracing the fact that you need help and you want to ask for it. Then identify any stress-inducing activities or pain points in your routines that would benefit from getting help. For example, in my business, I hired a marketing assistant to help me get the podcast published and out the door each and every week while I was still working my full-time job. And by the way, if you're a content creator or you need to create a lot of content in your business, I highly recommend checking out episode 56 of the podcast because I talk a lot about content batching. Now in my personal life, we hired a housekeeper. It was a huge weight lifted off my shoulders and it freed up so much time for me and my family. Again, consider what you can automate or delegate to someone else to free up your time and ease your stress. Maybe investing in an accountant will save you time when managing your budget and doing your taxes. Or instead of doing social media day by day, 
Create your social media posts in advance and schedule them out. Hiring a part-time assistant might help you keep your priorities and your schedule straight. Asking for help might be hard, but you've got this. Let's move on to tip number three. I'm not a huge fan of productivity hacks in general, but I know they work for a lot of people and they certainly can be useful. So I want you to save time where you can. One huge time saver is turning a meeting into an email or a Loom video or a Slack message when you can. Look, we're all tired of meetings. They happen too often and they're usually ineffective, but we still do them. You don't have to have those meetings if you can effectively communicate what you want in an email, a video, or other kind of message though. You save time and the people you're talking to appreciate that it saves them time too. Another thing you can do is create templates for tasks that you do often so they're easy to replicate later. Like onboarding a new client, for example. Why not create a template for scheduling your first meeting, uh, discussing your goals, sending a welcome gift, and so on. You could even create a checklist to ensure that you cover all the steps. There are invoice templates, uh, monthly email newsletter templates, social media graphic templates. Using templates saves time and it ensures that you're doing things right every time. I actually have a video about seven simple productivity hacks that can make a big difference in how you spend your time. Be sure to check that out. For my fourth and final tip, I encourage you to stick to your values. During this time of working as head of community and as a business owner, a lot changed and not just the way my work days looked. My husband, Scott, left his full-time job in early January and joined my business full-time as podcast producer and head of operations. It was a meaningful shift that we were both happy to make, but it caused some friction and challenges like any business would experience with a new team member. Scott and I also revamped and tightened up our systems and workflows, including my speaking workflow. By the way, you can click the link in the description to find out what I talk about and how to book me to speak at your next event. Last but not least, I started working with a business coach again. With so much going on, I wasn't quite sure what the future of my business would look like, and I needed help figuring that out. Yes, I'm a coach with a coach. Anytime you want to accomplish a goal or work on something specific, I definitely recommend finding a coach to guide you through it. I experienced all of these changes, but there were a few things that didn't change. And those were tasks and routines based on my values, like prioritizing instead of just being productive for productivity's sake and relying on a community of women for support and staying committed to people like you so I can help you spend time on what matters most. These values helped me stay the course and keep my eye on what matters most to me in life. So make a list of your values and what you don't wanna change even if your career or roles or life circumstances do. Family time, self-care, working out, making the most of your mornings. What do you want to spend your time on? You can even write down healthy habits you've created, like time blocking, which is one of mine, and weekly planning sessions, which I talk about in this video. Having your values and your purpose outlined will help you keep going when roadblocks pop up or when your schedule gets so busy that you don't even have time to think. All right, my friend, if you have a lot on your plate right now, I encourage you to keep this video in mind and refer back to it whenever you need it. Remember to get clear on your 80-20 activities. Find that 20%. Ask for help, save time when you can, and stick to your values. I know that these tips can help you get things done with purpose, as well as redefine your time so you can focus your attention on what matters most to you. But if you need a more in-depth plan for setting your goals and your priorities week by week, I recommend the Get a Game Plan Workshop. When you join Get a Game Plan, you'll learn how to win your week before it starts. In this workshop, you'll decide what matters most, design your winning week, and define your weekly game plan. Three lessons on how to set yourself up for success with Get a Game Plan. I've linked the workshop down in the description below, so go ahead and join us now. And be sure to click on the other links I've dropped down there while you're there. Thanks for watching and click that subscribe button so you don't miss my next video. I'll see you there.